Now, getting back to the first part of your question, which was one of injustice, isn't that unjust, right, is the question. And the, the answer is, love isn't just. Are you saying God's love isn't just? I'm saying all love isn't just. <laughs> that was confronting, hey? How many of you feel like love needs to be just? In fact, I'll just give you an example, right? Um, I was trying to work through issues. I, I was married at one stage and I was trying to work through issues of why I didn't feel like I felt like God wanted me to stay in this relationship because of my religious beliefs. And I, uh, I couldn't understand why there was so much pain in this relationship. Right? Because I felt I loved the woman and, uh, and I didn't feel like she loved me. And I went along to a, uh, a psychiatrist and he said, you know what your problem is? He said, your relationship's not just. He said that if your relationship's just, then you'd be right. It's only relationships that are just that are stay together. Now, in your life, you've probably noticed that, actually. Like, if you've got two people who are willing to cheat on each other, they'll probably stay together. <laughs> Don't they? And you've got two people who aren't willing to cheat on each other, then they'll probably stay together. But if you've got one person who's willing to cheat on its partner, and the other partner doesn't like it, are they going to stay together very much? Probably not, right? You've got one party that's willing to lie to the other. If they're both willing to lie to each other, they often stay together. But it's when one does the opposite to the other that the relationship. Whoever came in. <laughs> it's well. <laughs> when you've got one who, who, who does it, you know, who's doing the opposite to the other, then obviously there's, there's this thing that automatically happens. And what I'm saying to you is that that is not love. In fact, you will get to a stage in your life in the future where you can love another person and they can totally abuse you and you can still love them and you won't have any emotions attached to that. Right? Now, remember that's what I said in the first century, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek, right? And that's what I was talking about, this aspect where you become a person who's able to forgive anything that occurs. Right? That's what love does. And that's what God does, actually, too. Right? So a lot of times, a lot of times, people here on earth and in the spirit world expect justice, and don't understand that the reason why they're expecting justice is because they've been hurt, and they want the other person to hurt as much as they hurt. Right? Isn't a lot of times that what justice is to us? Yeah. And and so, is that love that I want somebody else to hurt as much as I hurt? It isn't love, is it? Right? So understand that there's, not, there's no justice as we see it in love. The truth is that if we look at justice from God's perspective, well, that's a different matter. Justice is always surrounding the laws of love. And you'll understand what justice really is when you start connecting to those laws of love that God has. And, but at the moment, our earthly concepts of justice are actually, in most cases, only a desire to punish. You're saying, you know, that you you can still love someone who harms you, mm -hmm. but in terms of, like, I can understand that in terms of anybody. Well, I probably wouldn't want to have a relationship with somebody who treated me really badly. Like, yeah, I didn't say you would want one. Right. I'm mean, just <laughs> saying that, that when you said that love isn't just, and we, I think you were originally talking about relationships, like you were talking about your marriage. Yeah, I'm saying that if I expect the other person to do anything that mirrors my own treatment of them, I am not loving them. That's, now, that's a concept of justice. You treat me how I treat you, isn't it? Mm. Right? But if I'm expecting anything from the other person, I am now out of harmony with divine love. I'm in harmony with natural love, because that's what natural love would do. But I'm out of harmony with divine love. That's not what God does. Right. And in terms of loving yourself, though, you wouldn't really want that for yourself. Well, the question becomes, like, and this is something I had to work through myself a lot, right? 
is that I was always thinking, yeah, you know, justice, 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 and having lots of emotions about that, of course, because every time someone treats me unjustly, you know, I'd go through an emotion. And in the end, that's what I realised I needed to do, was if I'm feeling feelings of injustice, it's because I'm expecting something from them in my relationship with them. And as soon as I'm expecting from something from someone outside of myself, I'm now in a state where I'm not loving them. But I'm not saying you'd have to be with them. Like, of course the law of attraction would probably mean that you couldn't be with them. Even. And that's okay. But you wouldn't make that choice to avoid them. Do you, do you follow me? How many of you, like, you've had something happen in the past, you've got upset about it, and the way you've calmed down your emotion is to avoid it? How many of you have done that? Yeah? Lots of us, right? And then we tell ourselves, oh, I've dealt with that. Right? The truth is we haven't dealt with anything. Right? What we've done is we've suppressed the core emotional thing that we needed to release. And when we do that, we're just, we're just way out of harmony with life. Right? So the key for us to understand with all of our interactions with others is if I desire, if I need something from you, and I don't get it, and I feel something like anger or something like that within me, or annoyance or frustration, any of those emotions, I am out of harmony with God's love. 